as you can probably understand, in five minutes it is impossible to explain Sun Earth connection. Yes, so, <laughs> thank you. And, uh, you should not have told that because now they have started counting. Anyway, uh, you should consider what I will be talking about as more as food for thought because we will be here for one and a half hours and we can discuss. You can. Uh, give questions and we can discuss any, anything you would like. Uh, I would uh, like to start uh, mentioning that the title chosen by the organizers uh, for this session, Mystery, Opportunity and Danger, could not be uh, more appropriate uh, because for, for the realm, for a realm that has stirred human imagination since antiquity and is today a field where uh, we have so many promising and challenging human endeavors. And it is appropriate because all of our activities in space uh, have been inspired by its mysteries, have been driven by the opportunities, and have been influenced by its dangers. So now we, uh, nowadays, today we have uh, five decades of space exploration behind us, which has started, which started in the end of the 50s. And uh, these five decades of space exploration have brought a revolution to science. Uh, comparable to the introduction to the invention of the telescope by Galileo. Uh, as Hans Alfheim, the father of space plasma physics, has put it, uh, spacecraft uh, which are equipped with advanced instrumentation uh, can observe a much wider range of phenomena and physical parameters that uh, is possible with the limited visual abilities of ground-based observatories, of ground-based telescopes, simply because the spacecraft are out of the terrestrial atmosphere, which blocks a lot of wavelengths, and also have, of course, as I said, advanced instrumentation. These observations by, spacecrafts, by spacecraft cover a vast range of human interests, and these interests uh, range from the creation of matter and the universe, to the properties of the stars and the sun, the closest star, the properties of the planets, and down to the properties of the climate and weather of our planet, the Earth. Now focusing on my personal field of research, uh, I would mention that spacecraft observations uh, over the past decades have revealed the activity modes of the nearest sun, uh, with the nearest star, excuse me, which is the sun, and the connection of these activity modes to the near-Earth space, which we call geospace. We have discovered, among many other things, how solar explosions influence the development of magnetic storms in geospace, and how the terrestrial atmosphere responds to these storms in space. Uh, something that we could not imagine a few decades ago, that the Earth is indeed able to respond to cosmic, to, to space uh, events, to space phenomena. It would also be worth to note that uh, we have understood in a large extent how solar eruptions uh, drive the, the only um, Astrono astronomical phenomenon, one would say, it's not really astronomical, but the only phenomenon in the sky that is observable by humans without any technical aid. And I refer to the, to the aurora, as you might uh, imagine. The aurora is the only um, sky uh, phenomenon that we can observe without any technical means. And uh, now is the time that even people living in lower latitudes, like in Israel, for example, might have the opportunity to observe uh, an oral display during times of very intense magnetic storms. Many, there are, of course, still many unexplored details of space, and these keep the mystery alive. And our interest, of course, very, uh, very intense. Space mystery are intriguing on their own merit, but they also represent potential threats against the opportunities of space. And by this, we come to the second keyword of the session, opportunity. I would say that there are four major opportunities in space. 
The first opportunity is maybe the most mundane, but also the most practical. It relates to the exploitation of space for the benefit of humanity today. I will, click, I will quickly mention the use of space as a platform to observe the Earth, to observe weather, to make more accurate weather forecasting, to study and monitor climate change, soil degradation, forest fires, pollution, ocean vari variability, and a lot more, everything in global scale, which is very important. Of particular importance in our days is the capability to support emergency situations with space imagery. And with emergency situations, I mean, I refer to floods, earthquakes, forest fires, landslides, etc. The second opportunity is related to the long-term needs of humanity. And with this, I mean, of course, the need for new sources of raw materials, like metals from asteroids, maybe, for example, or setting up a new home, space colonies on planet Mars or other planets in the distant future. The third opportunity is related to deepening our knowledge, our understanding of the universe, of nature, of the way life forms have evolved in the universe. This is by default associated with the development of advanced technologies, which have been serving mankind already in their daily needs on Earth. And I would mention here various innovative medical techniques that have their origin in space technology, like mammography, for example. It is also noteworthy that space exploration requires the cooperation of many different scientific disciplines to be effective, and this is a significant opportunity by itself. The fourth opportunity is like an umbrella to all the others, and it is the international collaboration that is necessary for space exploration. Because the most ambitious space endeavors cannot be implemented by any single nation. And I am closing with two words on the dangers, which we then can elaborate during our discussion. There are two different kinds of dangers associated to space and space exploration. They are man-made and natural. The man-made dangers, I would say, are Mainly two, the space junk that has been accumulating in, around Earth over the past decades. And also the, gr the greatest danger of all is to turn space into a battlefield. Hopefully not, but this would destroy not only the infrastructure in, spa in space that has been painfully uh, set up over the past decades, but it would also potentially endanger electronic infrastructure on Earth. And about natural dangers, I would mention stellar activity, which is always a danger, solar activity, which we can elaborate afterwards, and also asteroid threat on Earth, on which several groups internationally are also already working. Thank you for attention, and we will be, uh, we can interact later on. Thank you.